So in this video, we're going to go over everything you need to know and all the twists and turns to be able to sign up for, take, and do well on your optometry admissions test or OAT. And honestly, you've done one of the hardest parts already, and that is knowing that you need to take this exam. So once you know that, let's go ahead and start with the hardest thing, and that is signing up for the OAT. What's up YouTube, I'm Josh Reese, and I'm here to help you do the best that you can in the OAT. So as we get into the first part of the video, do not forget to smash the like button and subscribe for more optometry help. Now, just like all hard things in life, it starts out with the dentist. I'm actually not kidding. We're actually going to have to go to the American Dental Association website to find where you can sign up for the OAT. So you go ahead and go to oat.ada.org. The link is down below. So once you go ahead and click that button, you will wait for an email with your OAT pin on it. And so this isn't everything. This is just signing up for a pin. You need a pin number to be able to take the OAT. These emails take anywhere from like one to four days, usually like two days. But go ahead, when you receive that email, write it down. You don't want to forget it. And it's important that in these steps, you do not need to be ready to take the OAT right now. But for the next step, you do want to know if it's going to be in the next six months that you take it. So once you've registered for the pin, think of like a good winter break that you'd be ready to take it by or a good week in summer. For me, it was going to be the week before my fall semester started because I wanted to make sure that I had my whole summer or as much of my summer as I could get to study for it. So I could have applied in like February for August. Go ahead and think pretty early about when you want to take the OAT. Now, once those six months come, we have to go back to the dentist in the ADA and sign up. Go ahead, the link's down in the description, but it's basically oat.ada.org and then apply to take the OAT. So there's a little application that you fill out once you're on the website. And then once the application is filled out, you got it, we gotta wait for another email. So this email will have your ID or your eligibility ID. And this email usually takes about only one day because you already have your PIN number. And write down your eligibility ID once you have it. Please don't forget. And that same email with your ID comes with instructions on how to schedule your appointment and that ID expires within six months. So let's go ahead and move to the next part and actually schedule your appointment. So you already picked your ideal week. Now this is when you need to not be picky about when you take it. I know for me, COVID was pushing back some of the dates that I wanted. So I had to pick like a random Tuesday afternoon to take it at a location that was a little bit farther drive. And that's okay. Don't be picky about when you take it because spots fill up fast. You really just want to reduce the amount of stress as possible leading up to it. So pick a good week. Go to prometric.com. Prometric is like an independent contractor for big exams. They do the DAT and the OAT and like the GRE and some things like that. So you go to the Prometric website and you take that eligibility ID that you received and basically just follow the steps in that email. You have to click a hundred different buttons and find a location and then pick a time. It's not too horrible, but basically after all of that's done, you will then have your date, time, and location where you know you need to show up to take the OAT. So congratulations, you have one of the hardest parts under your belt. And I do want to say before I move on, please do this at least six to eight weeks before you take the exam because if you're doing it like within a month, slots are going to be taken up. So get your slot when you want it. Now the next step is pretty hard for a different reason, and that is the pay. You do have to pay to take the OAT. It's like the ACT or any other like big standardized exam. You're gonna have to take out your hard earned money and pay about $500 to take the exam. For me, it was about like $490, but just have $500 set aside in case prices change. One thing to know about the cost is that they do have waivers that you can get up to like half of your OAT cost paid for. So I'll go ahead and link it in the description, but they have an oat.ada.org link 
with fee waiver information. So first you have to qualify, and then once you qualify, then you can apply to waiver your cost of getting into the OAT. So I'm glad that I was able to tell some of you out there because I know some people who couldn't afford the OAT and they paid for it anyway, even though they didn't have to. But those waivers are first come first serve. And so get there early. That's why, you know, sign up for it way before you want to take it, you know, the six months if you can because you'll have the greatest opportunity to get those waivers. All right, now before we get into how to take the OAT, there's other considerations when you're still signing up for it. One consideration is that you can request accommodations. So I have some friends who have some vision disabilities and ADHD and they were able to apply to take it with accommodation. So they didn't have to sit in an exam room for five hours. And you can split it up over two different days and take half of it one day, half of it the other day. And so those accommodations that they can give to you will critically improve some of your scores out there. So look into the accommodations that you can have if you think you could benefit from them. Don't just suck it up. If you know your test score will be improved by requesting accommodations, go request them. And another thing to consider is that you want to take the OAT early enough that you can retake it if you need to. A lot of schools are looking for high scores and let's say you didn't get as good as you wanted to the first time you took it, but it was late in the cycle and you have to wait 90 days before you retake the OAT to be able to take it again. So what you need to do is even if it's not maybe the perfect, perfect day to take the OAT, Take the OAT with at least enough time to retake it once before the deadline ends. I would suggest taking it the summer before your senior year. And then if you need to retake it, you can take it during winter break. And I think around winter break is getting close to where you're not gonna be able to retake it again. So go ahead, take, it, take your first attempt before winter break because the cycle closes in spring. And you can also submit your application to the schools before you even take the OAT. So you can start on Optomcast. I'll have some links down below in the description on how to better use Optomcast, but you can go to the Optomcast website and fill out your application before you even take the OAT. And that same application stays if you're applying over different cycles in different years. Now you're all signed up. What do you expect? So. When you get there, it's going to be at like some normal office building and then they lease a space for the Prometric Testing Center. And it's kind of locked down. So you'll put your stuff in a locker and then you'll walk in and kind of be security checked. I know they had me like roll up my sleeves and make sure that there's nothing in there. I don't actually remember like if it was like a full pat down or not, but it was, you know, enough that they could be sure that you're not actively trying to cheat. And then you sit down at a little station and there you have some scratch paper, headphones to put on for noise canceling. And I think I had to leave my ID up so that they could, you know, have the cameras that are around the rooms and the cubicles looking uh, to make sure I was the right person for the right seat at the exam. But yeah, so it's kind of like the worst because it feels like a prison a little bit, but it's not too terrible, horrible. I know it just gave me some pretty bad anxiety. So pro tip when you're practicing, put yourself in a stressful environment when you're taking practice exams because some of the hardest things about the exam aren't necessarily the content, but like the timing when you're under that same amount of duress in a quiet room. Go to your public library or something like that, put on some noise canceling headphones if you have some and pound out those practice exams and that'll really help. So you're gonna have about 90 minutes for the survey of natural sciences. So biology, which is the main one, and then chemistry and organic chemistry next. So there's going to be about 30 minutes to give to each of them, but really like 40 questions of biology, 30 of chemistry, 30 of ochem is about what they are. Once you get that 90 minute chunk of sciences out of the way, then you do 60 minutes of reading comprehension. So that is two to three stories you have to read. They're scientific stories. Mine was like about bats and ecosystem and then another one about like the history of chemistry, I think. So it's just like two or three academic stories and then you go through and answer questions about what you read. And honestly, that one was okay, but do make sure that you know it's two or three because I know most of my practice exams were only two 
there ended up being three and I didn't divide my time right. And that was my worst section because I ran out of time. Next, you have a break. And they gave me like a little ED lunch break. I think it was like 30 minutes. I just kind of like literally sat on the couch and called my dad. There's like a little couch in the lobby for like 30 minutes. I just chatted with him. It was pretty cool. And like I ate some Gatorade and like Oreos. I don't know. So you have a little bit of a break in there to eat and you know recuperate, go to the bathroom. And then you go back for a 50 minute section on physics. And then the last one right after physics is about a 45 minute quantitative reasoning portion. So the exam takes about five hours total, but you're not actually taking the exam for the full five hours. I know that in between each section, there was a little bit of a break. I think it was not quite 10 minutes, but before you start the timer on the next section, it, they just let you sit there and gather your breath. I actually use some of those opportunities to go to the bathroom, but I wouldn't recommend going to the bathroom outside of like just that lunch time that they give you because you have to do a full pat down again. Just save yourself the trouble don't drink a lot of water before so that's it that's what to expect and how to take the exam but how do you do well now i have a bunch of videos that i'll link down below that uh, i go over different exact strategies that i used but the number one thing is reduce the amount of stress that you're going to have the day of I got only like two hours of sleep because I was just exhausted from studying. I was so nervous, like my whole future was on the line. I was like making this big deal. Honestly, I would have done so much better if I would have just gotten a good night's sleep. So number one thing to do to prepare, just try to reduce your stress as much as possible. Whether that's taking a bunch of practice exams in similar environments or paying for a course that really takes you through the entire OAT. Do anything that you can to reduce your stress is my number one advice. Really, the number two is if you want to do well, study for at least 100 hours minimum. Now, if you think about it, that's just, you could get that done in a week. You could study for 100 hours in a week. Now, that would be a big week and a ton of studying and you, you, know, you might get distracted. You might not get a whole 100 hours in. But worst comes to worst, you could study in just a week. Wouldn't recommend it, but study for at least 100 hours. 300 is the exact average score. I guarantee you that if you put 100 good hours of study in, you'll get at least a 300. And then how can I not recommend watching YouTube videos? I know I make some, but there are some other creators out there like Con T and Future iDoc and other people who just have great videos out that help share their experience with the OAT. So go ahead watch a lot of YouTube videos. Maybe they're not the most correlated from time to bettering your score, but they definitely helped me out and made me feel like I wasn't alone. And then lastly, I'll just name some of the resources that are out there that will help you. So you have books like a Kaplan book is what I studied with, or like some Princeton Review kind of OAT study book that you can get on Amazon. I can try to link um, things below in the description, but a book really helps you because they give you practice problems and then have sections referenced with those practice problems that you can learn about if you didn't know it. The next one is like videos. If you don't know about Chad's prep, I'll link him down below in the description too, but he has some free YouTube videos out there. He also has a course. Also courses to buy. So there's courses out there like Oat Booster, Crack the OAT, Study.com, Kaplan has one. Getting one of those prep courses will give you the best of both worlds with videos and like book type problems in one. And then there's also programs that just have problems, explanations, and practice exams out there like Oat Destroyer. And so go ahead, you can research all of these options. I'll try to link a few below in the description so you can go uh, search through them. You now know way more than I did when I took the OAT. So go ahead, share this video with someone you know needs it. I know I wish I would have had a video like this when I was signing up for the OAT because it just makes it so much easier. Go ahead and comment down below what you're afraid of with the OAT and I'll go ahead and respond and give you my thoughts or advice on your situation. I'll just be here to support you guys in whatever you need. Again, check out all the links below in the description and we'll see you in the next video.